What's up and welcome back to the Womcast. We've got a great episode for you guys today with Jack Spaniard, somebody I've been role playing with for quite some time in GTA and somebody you guys all probably know. And if you don't, then uh, if you watch my stream, you will know uh, because we kind of we work really closely together uh, within character uh, within my character, Nick Ender. And uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation for you guys to see uh, because, uh, for, well, for one thing, I got to say, I apologize for this being uploaded a little bit late. Uh, the reason behind that is that I recorded off of my camera audio, not my uh, mic here, my nice mic that sounds good. It sounded god awful. So we had to re record it, and that's why it's late. So I apologize to you all. If, uh, if you're mad about that, I totally understand. If you're going to, you know, you know, pitchforks and, you know, torches, do it. Do it. I get it. No, but uh, yeah, so that's why. But the cool thing about it is I think that this conversation was actually better than the first one we had, just to be real. And so I think you're going to enjoy it. I think you really are. So we will, uh, we're going to be jumping into that right now. But if you don't mind putting a like down below and also uh, if you guys got anything to say about the episode or questions or any of that kind of stuff, please put them in the comment section down below. I'll try to go through those and answer those and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see you guys in the interview right after this. Everybody, I'm here with Jack, uh, who plays Jack within our uh, within our uh, crew, uh, the Shadows and everything like that. You guys know him, um, but you actually no one's ever uh, you haven't shown your face on stream yet, have you? I haven't really. No, I don't even know how to uh -huh. say it all. To be fairly honest, so a little thing about all this, I don't really understand all the technology, like all the technology side of this. I am terrible yeah. with it. But at least Billy, who used to be in the Bow Boys with us a very long time ago, mm -hmm. I think his name is Static Control on Discord. Yep. Static, yeah. Well, basically, he was the one who taught us. All the, like all the things I needed to do, we got my layout sorted. But when I got it all sorted, I didn't really get it sorted with my face. Like I didn't do the yeah. face cam thing. And I was thinking about it. Maybe in the future I'll do it. But at the moment, it's not really something I've been looking to do. But yeah, it's not. I, I think the I'm RP doing. genre, you know, the RP genre is not like super like necessary. Um, I think I always do it because I, I just I just have always like had it. You know, um, there was moments where I would like fade it out in the past and stuff like that. And then um, but now I just like keep it on there because. Then they can see me like, you know, if I'm like driving, they can see me like sweating through the screen, you know, or they can like, I don't know, Not they can see that, me even like. Even if you get it angry, you can see your bullshit. Yeah. I guess there's a lot of things Absolutely. that you can get from a camera. So there's a lot of benefits towards it, but it's just not really something I'd be really looking to do when it comes down to it. Yeah. I think a lot yeah. of people are like that too. But as I said, in the future, maybe I'll do it. It's not oh, like yeah. I'm camera shy. It's just more the fact of like, yeah, I don't know. Do people ever ask you, like they, they ask you to put on face cam and stuff or no? Yeah, it really depends. If they ask me to put it on, I'll put it on. But yeah. The thing is, with me, is remember, I come from Spain, and I smoke a lot, and if I'm smoking on stream, I'm not too sure if I'm even allowed to do it. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, at least a lot of creativity comes from when I'm started, at least. So yeah, yeah. If I can't really, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're it like, I don't really want to, yeah, yeah. That I'm not too sense. sure, but well, the thing is, a lot of people say that you can just sort of bullshit around it, and you can sort of still do it, but yeah. I'm really not too sure, and I'm not too sure if it's something that I really want to test. Until I actually yeah. get a confirmed answer. Well, yeah, I just feel like, yeah, I don't know. Even like eating well, and I think, all that sort of stuff, if you want to eat or some stuff, I don't know. I feel like it's just not something I'm looking to do. I don't know. I will say too, it's, like when, when face cam's off, you kind of feel like, uh, like I used to like it doing it in more intense situations because I felt like I make like facial features when I like get angry or like I'll even talk with my hands when I'm like in like a moment, you know what I mean? Like, like I'm doing it right now, you know, like I'll, I'll yeah. do, I'll do that. And uh, sometimes like people seeing that is just kind of, you're like a little self, I, I get a little like, damn, I, I look over, I'm like, oh shoot, people can still see me right now. <laughs> see me right well, now. Yeah, I guess that's what, like the first few months though, after the first few months, who cares, you know? Yeah. yeah. You probably just get used to it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, back to the point, which appreciate having me on here. Yeah, man. But real question, you know, when it comes down to it, how did the mug of the day start? <laughs> how did the mug... Oh, you want to know how the mug of the day started? Yeah, it was... Bro, horrible, I've been doing... Yeah. How did I, this I've all been... start? Because it's always been a question of mine. It's like, how the fuck did this ever start? And you've been doing this since the day I met you, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I was in a sales job. And uh, I, I, was doing, I was doing well in a sales job. Uh, Jordy and I, like, we had just got... We got married. 
And um, this is why so, Jordy is so amazing because we got married and we were in like a, we were in an apartment. Then we moved to like, like a, I think it was four bedroom like house where we were at. We were just living, you know, like doing well, like making quite, quite a good money. And I, yeah. And it was just, it was a sales job that completely like, like everything, like money was, was good. But my, me was like so bad. Like, like I was just like, I, I, all my creativity was gone. Everything like who I was like, who I knew myself to be was just gone. And I was just cashing that in for a paycheck, you know, um, yeah. of like being in a sales job and just being like, oh, this is what you're supposed to do with life, right? Like you hate your job until you can make enough money to retire. And then you just retire, you know? And I kind of like bought into that idea for a little bit. And, um, and then uh, I really got into a really bad place, like mentally. And I kind of like... I played some video, like my mom actually got me an Xbox randomly, like random. An Xbox One or like an old Xbox? Uh, it was an Xbox One. Yeah, it was like okay, Xbox yeah. One. Yeah, I'm not that old to where I'd be like in a, you know, like, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, X- or something. But yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, no, it was Xbox One and, uh, and then I started playing Fortnite on there, like when it was like early on, um, yeah. when it was like in the heyday and Eddie then, Gordon was your terrible. I was all right. You know, I was playing on controller back in the day. It was, it was just kind of having a good time. Okay, yeah. right, and um, yeah. And then I saw the streamers and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, shoot. Like for the first time, I was like, oh, my God, I can just go into this room. And there's no like because I had like managers like asking, oh, what are you selling this week? What are you doing this week? And then I would sell like that much. And then it would be like, oh, can you do more than that? Can you do more than that? And then like yeah, it was just like just a constant value. stress of that of people telling me what to do. I know this is supposed to be a podcast where I'm interviewing you, but <laughs> this is a good conversation. But this good I time. think, uh, yeah, I, I just, I found something that I could just kind of do on the side to like find a create, creative space. And then it just started kind of like building from there. Um, and with Mug of the Day, I did that since like the beginning of my stream. So, so I was like, like the start, you think, yeah? Yeah, I, I kind of came up with an idea early on that if I could start my stream in the same way, I could always get into the stream and kind of get to the same kind of like vibe, even if I wasn't like feeling that way when I started. So um, well, that's kind of- Well, it is kinda... very entertaining way to start it. But the real question is, how much money do you spend on books? Like, is this a fresh mug every single day? So when I got like, married, Jordy, Jordy had like, <laughs> Jordy had like tons of mugs, dude. Well, like, how many mugs? She has like thousands of mugs. Jordy, no, what's it, the problem? You, you, we're up to like, really we're, like in the we're in the 200s right now, I think for mugs is where no, we're at. Uh, I think we are. Maybe a little less than that. Where do you put um, these? If you got like a place where you just dude, I'm right. I'm looking to the right right here because I have like an upper cabinet right here, yeah. and I've got a lower cabinet that also has like mugs in there, and then we have some in the kitchen. <laughs> when we got married, I made her get rid of mugs because that was before I was like streaming or anything like that, and I was like, dude, we, this is just it was taking over so much cabinet space. But now we get them like at thrift shops and stuff like that a lot of times, or like a lot of times viewers will send them in now. But um, that's nice. It's really yeah. good. It's cool. Gen over run, for thought, sure. I was like, Jesus Christ, if you're going to buy a mug every time, it's, it's going to start getting expensive, man. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it, was really, but it was really about cre- getting into a creative like sandbox, you know? And it wasn't RP yeah. at that time. It was like, you know, I did Fortnite, then I did Variety, stuff like that. And then when I found RP, it was even more like of a creative sandbox. You know what I mean? Uh, and you, you would feel understand like more you than you can anybody. interact with your chat a little bit better whenever it comes down to RP. No, actually. Or do you I, feel I, like at least when it comes down to like other games, you could interact with the chat a lot better, like a yep. lot better than without yeah. being an RP? I think I, I could interact a lot better in variety and stuff like that. And so that's why I like sometimes I like to dip back into that because that's really why I'm doing it, you know, is like the, the connection like that, you know, um, like person yeah. to person um, versus it versus the game I'm playing. But RP is different. Like you can connect with people through creating a story that they're watching, you know, um, which is cool. But I, I do miss like just being able to just sit this, like play a game, pause it and be like, yeah, so what's going on? You know, this, this, and this, and this, and then come back to the game. Boom. Versus like, we'll be in a car, you know, and we're talking. And then if I just like go, go dark on you, you're like your whole side of it's screwed, you know? So we have to like, you know, yeah. you got to find the, the, the balance and the juggle to like reading and talking and, and then thinking about what's next, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's hard to tell. But hey, it is what it is at the end of the day. I yeah. Just, yeah. I was always intrigued on the question, but hey, it's your podcast. So let's see what's going on. No, you're fine, dude. I, <laughs> we're open to talk about anything, dude. And, and no, I appreciate you asking because sometimes it's cool to like think back on it. But um, do we got to talk about how we met? Because I'm sure people are wondering because I, I think we have a vibe 
where it's like it's almost like a brotherly kind of vibe you know like it's it's very much yeah. like there'll be times where we butt heads and there'll be times when we like we like are like on the same page yesterday actually we had a moment where we were just driving you're driving i'm giving you comms and like my brother my actual brother Stone in the chat, chat yeah like my brother in the chat was like he's like dude there's nothing like watching nick and jack just like get away from cops together you know what I mean? like it's like it's just like having a good time with it and so yeah do you remember the first like first time we met yeah so you may have heard this one before but it was through beans so at least i had mm-hmm. uh basically met this guy called beans and it was through basically like just a very vague job which just wasn't really programmed very well and it was like house robberies and basically when you try to do these house robberies you would walk into people a lot but you had this guy called you know beans he would walk into us constantly and i would walk into him and we started arguing in these houses so i got to a point where i speak in the dock who was a really close friend of ours and i was like shit we need to go find this guy and i was trying to look for him but billy who was dark brought me to meet you and i think yeah. it was billy saunders and a few others and we we're just having a conversation and then Beans comes out of nowhere. And I'm like, Doc, I need to kill this guy. So I chilled <laughs> with you for the day because I was thinking the whole day of like finding a plan to kill Beans. But then after a while, we started to meet all the boys. And it just started to turn it into a thing where we just all started doing highs. We all just started developing our crim characters. I don't know how far as yours was developed, but mine was only, what, like a few months in. And it yeah. was, um, I don't know, it definitely was slow burn. In a way, at least it took me like a month to get into the crim side of things. But yeah. I know it was really good because we ended up making the whole road boy thing and there was just so many great faces back then it was just like really good people that I don't know were just really in it for the right reasons it was a heyday of that server I think you know like for for us at least you know like I always say that there's like kind of waves within servers like there's like heydays for groups and, and you know it goes up and down it goes up and down and I think that that was like a heyday in that moment um, it, everything kind of just aligned at the right time. Like yeah. for me, I was trying to build like with the whole character of Nick Ender when it started was, I was actually going to not have him around for a long time. I was just going to like do a start and an end um, where he would, you know, come in, make enough money for his family, send it back to his fa- and then go back to his family, you know? And then the, I just really enjoyed playing the character. So I was like, I think he sticks around, you know? Oh, that's but, hilarious. Um, yeah. You know, we just uh, go take it, over someone's compound that we just stood in their compound for ages. You remember wait, the compound which, that we took over from the professionals? Oh and was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of money. We're gonna send it back to your wife. Yeah, I yeah, that yeah, was the yeah, yeah. We was like, shit. Next done. He yeah, next all the money back to his family. It turned <laughs> into a joke. That's what all the boy said. He's like, he took all the money for the compound. It's gone. We'll yeah, go yeah, check yeah. It's a joke. It was good shit. I, yeah, yeah, I think it's it was cool because the the idea was to build teams that could do jobs. You know what I mean? And I think that's where like we just found so many interesting people. Like, even Billy, who, Static Control, he was in a in a parking lot like standing and talking to another guy. And I, I came up to both of them and I was like, Hey, uh, you guys, what are you guys doing? You know? And they're like, uh, just talking, you know, I'm like, I hey, mean, I gotta make some money, bro. I mean, I need, I need some backup, you know? And I was like, they're the best oh, we'll, we'll go to a store so or something, you know? People. Yeah. Whatever you find exactly. randomly like that, you just find some people and then it's, it's not the jobs that you do or the, like, or who the person is. It's more the way they do it. Yeah. The bandos you see, but I don't know. I, I believe at least whatever you take someone on the job, at least for us, it's very easy to determine what sort of character it is. Mm-hmm. If it's someone who's like really nervous, if they crack under pressure, if they RP the whole time. Like it's not if you're good at the job. So let me put Billy Rayman in perspective. He's a guy who we know for a long time. First job I did with this guy, this was like when I was quite new to RP. Well, not new to RP, but like new to like the English side of RP. When I just got back yeah. to the 5M. And basically, he came into my car and I think he fell out and he got like a broken leg. And then he started running with the injured war. And then he started crawling. And he had so much stuff on him. And he was going to lose all this like really valuable stuff. But he kept on doing it. And all the guys in the car was getting annoyed at him. And I was like, shit, this guy is actually really, really good shit. And we yeah. Him and we started bringing him on loads of stuff. And yeah, like in the end of the day, you're not good at the job. You're not going to get all the money. But your RP is impeccable. And it's actually just really cool to see at times. So yeah, I feel like whenever we bring all these random people on jobs, it's really an opportunity to see what they can give and what they can do at times. And I feel like a lot of the people which do do good usually have a really good chance at least to come. Yeah. You know, and chill and do what yeah. they do with us. That's that's kind of that is the truth. Like 
there's nothing more magical than finding like the random people and just having like a crazy like moment happen or like a whole storyline get built from just like random people meeting. I mean, all of us are that, right? Like we yeah. didn't know each other before and you go in and it's just like this, like really, really cool. Like, I don't know. It's just a really cool vibe it's a really cool when, when that happens. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I don't know. It's a bit of a strange one, but yeah, it's, um, it's just something that you let ride and you sort of flow. And, at times it's cool, but um, at the end of the day, it's still RP. Yeah, and yeah, it's more just see how your characters form heads and stuff. But even though uh, we're all boys, it's like still like shit. We're yeah, all characters in the end of the day, and I don't know, there's still gonna be some sort of dilemmas between us. I feel like that at times could look like a bad thing. Yeah, but at times it's like a really good thing as well. Yeah, I think like it's hard because like when you when you do like I don't know how you feel about this, but when you do like go into a server with a bunch of friends. Sometimes I think that ruins a bit of it. Like it's better to like go in, like the two friends go in and then they kind of like find their way. And then they kind yeah. of like, maybe they come together and maybe they don't, you know? And just I think a way to basically blows around. To. Yeah. I think that's, that's kind of a key, right? Like a lot of people might think that you and I, and like some of the guys, like since we had known each other in another server came in together I remember seeing you at Alta. Like I saw you in passing at yeah. Alta and I was like, I'm going to wait on that. You know, like I'm going to wait on that and just see, let him kind of like do his thing. And then if it, those paths cross, those paths cross. And then, well, you I know, seen you too, yeah. and I was like, I'm just going to let you do your thing as well. And it, yeah, they didn't ever get to a point where we ended up meeting until we got forced into basically the same room. And yeah. That was because Billy was doing that thing with us and Billy ended up being with you. And mm -hmm. it basically just connected things. But I like how it's random. And yeah. it's natural in the end of the day, not just random. So, well, yes. so you mentioned, you mentioned like uh, Billy Raymer, you know, crawling during a heist or doing that kind of stuff. What do you think is like, this is a really interesting conversation for us because we do a lot of jobs, right? Um, and what do you think the balance is of being a heist character, getting better at jobs or like boosts or like whatever, and keeping, you know, the, I don't know, the, the fun for like cops, you know, like what, what is like some of the things that you think about when you're putting a job together for like the other players, like the, on the other side for the cops, for the people that you're like putting the job together for, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, it really depends. Can you detail that question again a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really understand it. Yeah. It was a dumb way to ask it. Don't worry. <laughs> but no, basically like, just give me a second. Which how do you, yeah, you're fine. How do you balance out a, a job, you know, like, Cause I think about it sometimes where I'm like, we think about like swaps. We think about like things. Okay. Can the cops even parallel this? Can they do that kind of stuff? And they might assume that we don't, you know, but, uh, no, we definitely do take it into consideration. Yeah. Like in the end of the day, when it comes down to it, it's not even like two in our own haunts. We know the mm -hmm. certain, like in a waste spots, certain places, which if we take them, we're going to lose it. Yeah. And I'll just say, I think this is like a really good thing that McGinnis brought up the other day. So it's like when a lot of people talk about rat strats. He yeah. brought up somewhere which was quite peculiar because he told me, I think it was in Berkshire, he told me something about that someone had used the airport jump nine times in a row. And it's like, fair enough if you have a cool strat. Because you can yeah. use it. Because in the end of the day, it's not fun to drive in a straight line. But make it random. Make it cool. Like, make it natural. Make it like something where it's not repetitive. Because yeah. if you go and do a jump and you attempt it, and you do it nine times in a row, just hoping for someone not to hit it one of them nine <laughs> times. It can get very repetitive, at least for the other side. Yeah. So we both played the other side. We both had gold characters, even though we've not really been too focused into them. I did two weeks, yeah. Uh, put in a two-week show. <laughs> I did three. <laughs> no. Pedro the Petrifier. The Petrifier, was, <laughs> he was great. Yeah, Pedro the Petrifier. But anyway, basically, it was, um, yeah, I don't know. It's something that you need to check on both sides. Because in the end of the day, how I've seen it is, if you don't do that, and you keep giving shit scenes to PD, at times, people are going to give you shit scenes. And yeah, if you're looking for a good scene, you sort of need to give a good scene. And not everyone is always going to like the scene. There's always going to be people which are going to dislike it in some sort of manner. But that's just because our characters are very dramatic. I don't know. We had a lot of dramatic effect to it. So at times yeah. they're very, I don't know, irrational at times, I'd say. But then on the other hand, when it comes down to the OYC side of things, we are rational. Because mm -hmm. it's very easy to just sit in a corner and maybe just shoot the fuck out of the tires. Or maybe yeah. just lead you into a kill box every time. Or not even just that. Maybe even the fact of, I don't know, say like the 10 strips. Like we can use spike strips if you want. Like we could get some spike strips, use them, end your chase in two minutes. Just do it right outside the bank. Yeah. But we don't do that. We use a 10. And some people get pissed at the 10. But then on the other hand, it's like yeah. we're using this 10, so we're not taking your tires. 
this very hard. Dude, let's it, let's city. explain tent strips really quick, okay? Yeah, this is good one. This is this is a good one to talk about because I, I, we've gotten some flack for using. Um, so there's a mechanic. If you guys don't, if you have, haven't seen us use this before, there's a mechanic within uh, Rush Hour where you can buy a tent at like the the um, Mega Mall or like the U Tool, which is basically like you know like a tool shop or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's just like a tool shop around in the city. Yeah, you buy like a pop up tent, right? And you can you can use this tent. Uh, and it takes a little while to use it. Like it takes like a little, like it like kind of like loads, you know, you, like you have to like put it to place it, you know, and you have to like time it and you place it and then it's a tent. And then if they run into it, it's kind of, it's pretty solid. Yeah. It's, it's basically very solid, but they can pick it up. Like they can get out of their car, pick it up. But we use it as a criminal's version of, of like a spike strip. Right. So like what we'll do is we, we, you can, and I will add, you can throw it out of a car while you're inside of it. We don't do that. We don't, we, do that. We get out, we, we like stand there as if we're going to spike strip. Like they, they could see us standing there and we like throw it down and, uh, and it'll block. I think it's a really creative use of something within the server, um, as a criminal mechanic. And it depends also on how much you use it. But I think, yeah. uh, I, I think realistically, I personally, I think there's no reason to get flack on that. It like, at some points, you just as a criminal, you start asking like, "What do you want us to do?" You know, <laughs> like, like, what, like, do you not want us to do like anything different? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's you the that's the question. Some sort of spice up. And that, the that's, day, that's yeah, the, yeah. It's a thing that we can use to get away, but it's a thing that we're giving you two avenues. And what I mean by the two avenues yeah. is we can get away, yes, but you're going to be able to pick up that tent strip. If you would have mm -hmm. used spike strips or shot your tires or shot them which is one of the other avenues which a lot of people take, then we would have ended the scene for them. And then it's like, yeah, it could have made for some badass scene if it made sense. But well, I don't really see no substance behind it, and then PD have got no chance. They can yeah. jump out, take them down, and if they have a parallel, they can catch up, which has happened yeah. loads of times. And the time is really funny. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's the same thing as using blocks. So it's like if we use a block, there's always some sort of other entrance where you can get around. Or the yep. way to parallel. So say like garbage. And if we do garbage, you can go through the other side of the bridge. By doing a block, we're just holding you off for five seconds. It's five seconds to get our boy away, yeah. But, you know. Yeah, I think... We have tools as well when we're using tools, but we're not using them in the most ratty way. It's yeah, I, I think... Uh, yeah, the blocks... We, we, that's one thing that we've adopted recently, more and more. Well, because uh, of the boost. Yeah, it's because of the boost, yeah. Out. Yeah, and I think that's been better. Like, I I would rather do a block than a swap, right? And I think the reason for that is that it's, uh, yeah, it's better for it's more like the swaps aren't really entertaining, in my opinion. You know, like you jump into another car, you go, you know. But the well, blocks are cool because you're like, you have to um like all work together, you know. All right, three, two, one, we're coming through. Boom, he's got to hit it perfectly. We got to get through it perfectly. Yada yada yada, and I think uh, for for blocks, I, I think cops should should like those personally way more than swaps. Right, know, so but maybe not. At least a little thing. So this is like things from like back in the day. I remember we had a chase once on a big tank. It lasted over an hour and forty minutes. We did over seven car swaps. <laughs> but at times, a lot of people will cry about these car swaps. But what they don't understand is if you want a long scene, a gas tank in a car only lasts half an hour. I think it's like mm. twenty minutes, half an hour, or something like that. So yeah. you've only got half an hour to drive. If you run that gas out completely and you jump into another car and then you make this seem really long, I don't see an issue in it. Yeah. The issue is, is yeah. if you run it around and you jump it from one car to another just because you smash the door or something like that and you constantly do it, then I can understand it. But yeah. if people say What's, no we spots, no blocks, no nothing, your chase is always going to be deemed to be less than half an hour. So it's yeah. like, yeah. If you really well, want there's a lot of times where... Really cool at times, you won't be able to. Yeah. There's a lot of times where we'll call it off too. Like we'll be like, okay, guys, like, yeah, there's no more, no more swaps or or whatever. If we're gonna do something, let's get out with a block, or we gotta just drive our way out yeah. of this thing. Um, and it really yeah, depends I, on the severity of the scene as well. Exactly. So, like, there's a lot times, of things. If your character's like gonna lose it all, you're gonna get raided. It's like fuck. If things off the board, you know, we can. But not yeah. everything's off the board. But what I'm trying to say is, you can do a lot of swaps. You can do a lot of whatever. Yeah, they, they've got to catch you. Yeah. Yeah, it's more just obviously understanding the severity and how your character will take the severity of it. Yeah. If it's something that it's not really worried about, then fair enough. But yeah, I feel like you need to at least have it in some sort of way controlled so you're not, you know, just constantly getting away. 
I feel like even yeah. at times when I've gone into like certain situations and I've shot, it's like, what am I going to do? Just keep on going in the car and just swap, 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 swap. I feel swap, like yeah, I need yeah. to change it up at times. And yeah, you don't want it to yeah. always be the same outcome. At times you may shoot, you may win. At times you may shoot, you may lose. At times you may drive, you may win. At times you may lose. But it's cool to have it this big to dot always going for the same thing. Yeah. I think on, on the shooting side of things, that's a, that's an interesting conversation as well, because, uh, we're kind of, uh, I, I think not like opposites on that, but we, we definitely like, I, I guess maybe, well, definitely. I, I don't want to say opposites. Cause to me, an opposite would be like someone who's just like shooting nonstop. You know what I mean? Like running around a circle, you know, but you know, when it comes down to Nick, Nick, whenever he was in the jewelry store, he wouldn't shoot his glass too. Yeah. Jack sees that he would. In a way, depending on what's going on. Obviously, if I'm in a scene where it deems where I feel like I don't need to or I don't have to or it doesn't make sense to me, mm -hmm. then I won't. But most of the time, it's going to make sense. And not just that. It's like one of the small jobs that even OOC, I understand that gives some sort of instigation to at least use that. And at times, I think, if you as a cop, how are you going to see a gunfight? You want to see it because someone's trying to take you hostage in some stupid manner where they've got a gun out from inside of their car and they're trying to take you and you get shot over some stupid shit. Yeah. Or would you like to see it on something with a little bit more substance? So, yeah. Well, know. it's something that I've, uh, I've even kind of started to like, uh, cause before it was like shooting on jobs is like, no, like don't do it. Like not at all. Like there's no reason to, um, unless it like really, really, really gets there. Now I'm a, I'm a little bit more like I kind of get it, you know, like I get more of the side of it. I think where I was playing Nick was I wanted him to be a pretty like smart heist character um, where it was like, like when I started him, I wanted it, everything to be like, like, like yeah, meticulously kind of like planned out. Stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like that. I was yeah. visualizing like a heist movie, well, you, you know, that. like. Um, and the, yeah, the top and that, the, 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 not, not the top character, but what I'm trying to say is like the top criminal, you know, like, yeah, like yeah, something on a plan, like down boom, 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 to boom, a boom. T, they can't be no yeah. fails. But I feel yeah. like as development goes, that's where we've sort of understood that we need two sides of it. Yeah. Because in the exactly. end of the day, it is a video game and we've learned ways over the, I don't know how many years have we played this together, of getting away. So it's like, if you want to use that every time, then, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's just not fun. Not for us, nor for the viewers. So. Yeah, it's not really something that we're looking to do. So yeah, we've always got consideration for both parts in it, even though some people may not see it. Just well, that's how we do so, some of our plans. You know, people might look at it and be like, "Why? Why not just like drive and get away?" You're like, "Yeah, we could do that." You know, but the reality: yeah. how much fun is it to like put every get everyone to everyone together and have them like you know drive a car on top of a semi and just be you know having a having a freaking blast the whole time? Well, and if we do get away, it's badass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or or whatever. A great example is Chad. Chad, yeah, mate, he uh, he got you guys boxed a few times, but he's actually yeah, a really, yeah. really good driver. Yeah, like he was like all the cops when they used to speak on our last server, they used to say basically like me, Tommy, and Chad. Like Chad is a yeah. really good driver. It's because I wasn't there. But he... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but yeah, it was because he wasn't there. I guess at the time. I'm just what joking. I'm, I'm, joking. I'm joking. He was known to be a really good driver, but at times he likes to take outs, and he'll give yeah. into it, and people won't believe him, and they'll just be like, "Yeah, you're just shit," but he's not. I know Ian. You know, I've seen him before. Yeah. I've seen how he does. And um, yeah. It's I don't know, bro. This guy got me boxed over by jewelry, bro. No, I'm just joking. It was, yeah. it's kind of funny. Like, there's sometimes when I get boxed by the cops, dude, and I'm just like, damn, that was a really good box, dude. Because yeah. <laughs> that box he got boxed up in, we were like right by, uh, kind of like the place right before Jewelry Jump, like closer to the jewelry, like in that little area where there's two ways to go. And, uh, Dude, he got boxed in, and no joke, there was no space between any part of the, like, it was just like a perfect box, dude, and it yeah, was just like funny. They just completely fucked with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it was like, understand. The cops ain't gonna it was badass, it was they good. They can't pull off these badass ways of catching us. Mm -hmm. They need to get some sort of way of catching us, because if every time it's a bit of a shit way they catch us, then they're not going to have fun, so we need to understand they need to have fun. To get well, them. I think... I think aggression from the cops sometimes for me, I, I kind of, I kind of, I don't mind it, you know, unless it's not like an overpowered kind of way, as long as it's not that, but like yeah. some of that aggression, it makes us have to like, Oh shoot. Okay. Yeah, we're, really we're, it's competitive. You know, it's yeah. like, it's fun. It's fun for, for both sides. I think. Cause like if they're trying to box us, you know, or like if we're running, we're on foot, they're tackling us and then trying to cuff us and we got to break cuffs or we got to do that, that kind of stuff. I think that's really interesting. You know, like I think it's, 
well, for the viewer, the for everybody, you know. That I had, at least on Rush Hour, was with me, you, Mason, and Sig. Uh, two people from the, the, the yeah, motorcycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we yep. were done a job where we did the Royal Cards, or whatever it was. It was like the uh, like the cards. We had like a Jester, a Queen, okay. a King, the whole shebang. And we were on a bridge. The card completely got the bollocks. We had Fade plays on the car, so we already had something which was going to get taken straight away, and you knew yeah. they was pointing the car. So you knew mm-hmm. even just losing the car was another hundred grand in points. I remember this scene, yeah. So we started running. We have a load of cops on us. It's me, Mason, you and Sid. We're all just running on the road and we got to run down like two kilometers. It was like a kilometer on the bridge or like two kilometers to get to the car. I know we what a kilometer like, is. Yeah. It, well, it's like <laughs> 1.6 It's 1. 6 miles to be exact. Perfect. Well, basically, <laughs> we ran a kilometer or whatever. We tried to get there. And in the meantime of doing it, we were just tackling each other constantly. And the cops were doing their best to catch us, but we would constantly just tackle them. Then mm-hmm. we ended up taking one. I think we took, I took one hostage or something. We, we ended up getting away. It was like a really, really good scene. We ended up coming back and getting the car and the whole shebang. But the intensity behind it was really high. We thought it was going to get caught the whole time. And then something happened. Yeah. And it, I don't know. It just made the scene a lot longer. And even by coming back and getting the car and getting the right place and calling up the other car that was at the car, like the whole thing just, I don't know. It was really good. And the intensity behind it was cool. Because you knew they yeah. were trying to catch you. Like whatever they flip your car at times i understand people are trying to be nice yeah and on the other hand it's like bro i, I want to be caught in some sort of way so like i had a scene well, that, the other that's day, the thing yeah is i'm oh, sorry go ahead go ahead no i think i had a scene the other day where something happened with a boost and this boost was a one-seater boost <laughs> and me and chris was there and we was in it thinking fuck what are we gonna do and the cops are like we're just gonna wait I'm like, bro, you do what you need to do. You, you, you can speak to me. Do what you need to do. I'm just chilling in the car. So I'm just basically seeing if I can buy time speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like, no, no, I understand this broken. And obviously they're just trying to be nice because they understand maybe it seems like it's not worked. But that wasn't their fault. Like we should have worked around that because we should have knew what car it was and we should have put some block there. Yeah. Maybe someone could have spoken to him or some sort of bullshit. So yeah, at times you don't want like a crazy aggression from PD. Like where they're looking for W's constantly but then on the other hand you want them to try catch us as well so it was like investing. well also i think it's for their immersion as well you know um and the hard part is they get so much flack from like molding like you know criminals or or, or whatever that i think they become a little bit like i, I just don't want to i just don't want to create that for somebody else you know they're thinking player to player as well but i also care about their immersion in the sense like they pull up to something like that they see a bunch of bodies on the ground or something, or they put, you know, whatever it is. You got to do what you got to do, you know? And if we lose out on that boost, we lose out on that boost and it happened and, you know, yeah, whatever, what you thinking. know? I was just like, just, just or if you got to drive something. around enough to lose them and then hack, do one hack, drive around enough to lose them, do one hack, you know, like that's yeah, how that it's got to be. be. Really cool because I didn't, yeah, be like shit. What a story to tell. I, did a I remember I did myself. like a, I did a one man B boost, like when it, back when boosting was like different. And it was badass because it was like, I, I just literally would stop and then have to hack it. And then like, I would get away enough to like stop, hack it. Yeah, it, it was cool, you know? But I, I think also it's kind of split second decisions that are that are kind of the hardest part of RP is that, you know? Um, and then you put into the mix something that you understand now is you put in the mix like viewers with that, like making those split second decisions. It gets messy, you know? Um, because... Some of these people don't stream, the like other cops, right? And they'll go back and watch what our interaction was like, you know? And so they see someone in the chat who's getting too pumped up, too into it. And, you know, that, that it affects them, you know? And, and that's why, like, the streaming portion of RP is, is the, the most important, like, probably, like, an important part of it, of it. And the most important part to me, you know? But I think... uh you know, sometimes, uh, you know, viewers can get kind of pumped up and say something about a cop and then that will like kind of reflect on their future ones. Cause I've, I've gotten DMS before, you know, <clears throat> like so-and-so so said that, you know, they think I believe that because so-and-so said it and I'm like, no, hold on, dude. No, you did fine. You know, you did completely fine. Just like reassuring, yeah. like, dude, you made your decision. I'm fine with that. I'll go to jail for 30 minutes. So I don't, you know, whatever, dude, like it's. You know? Yeah. Like and if so, you approach him with something and it's a delicate scene, then maybe, you know, but obviously you're not approaching him in any sort of manner. So it's good that you say that as well, because let's be fairly honest, on any side, and I always tell everyone this, if you have a fight or anything, please do not come into the jets because we could be as best as we can to neglect people trying to say anything bad about anyone. 
But at times, people don't mean you wrong. They mm-hmm. mean well. And they just seen something and they brought it up and maybe they ain't right. It, it, it makes sense. These people haven't RP'd for so long, maybe, who are in the viewers. So at times they can bring something up which they think is right. Yeah. It's completely right for you to bring it up. That's what you're here to do, to speak. You're not there to be quiet. So yeah, yeah. like sometimes they can bring it, something up which is wrong. But yeah, it's not their fault in the end of the day. Like shit. If they're trying I, to, I feel like, bad, yeah. Like, cause well, we yeah. sign up for, like, because we stream, we sign up for like the ridicule, you know? But like, I, I, yeah, it, it just sucks when it's somebody getting ridiculed and then they, they see it. Yeah, because I've had multiple messages where someone's like, oh, I saw someone said this. And I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I try to like mitigate as much as I can, you know, and tell my chat, uh, you know, keep it about characters, not people, is, you know. The best way to is don't go in there. Best way yeah, to do it. yeah. Let's be yeah. fairly honest, but like I've even been in your chats before and even if Jack does a small little thing, then you've yeah, got yeah. maybe even someone saying something about it. And it's like, well, I don't mm. mind. These people are there and they mean well. They're here to watch either one of us or one of our friends. And they can say what they want. It, there's really no issue at the end of the day. Like, the yeah. important thing is knowing that we're doing things right and that's all. And if people like watching what we're doing, then that's perfect. But apart yeah. from that, people can say what they want. But I really think it is on the people that play the game and on all the content creators to not go into people's chats and expect to see the best, you know, expect to see people talking well about. Because yeah. you don't want people speaking bad about someone. But if you didn't do well in a situation, why would you expect someone to come and yeah, enjoy the chat and like... expect them to be speaking well about you as well? So yeah, yeah, at times it's a bit two-sided. But I really feel like it's not on the viewer, it's on the person who goes into the chat. You really shouldn't go in there. But then on the other hand, we do try our best to keep, you know, any sort of hate towards anyone out of a chat. But I feel like... Yeah, it, you got to moderate different. it at some point, you know? Like there's, there's definitely a point where... Anytime it becomes about a person, like the person playing the character, yeah, the and not about things. not about the character, that's when I go, okay, you're gonna stop now, or else, you know, it's, there's gonna be some some other uh, consequences. But I think the, um, yeah, I I, I just think it, it that side of it, I always feel like sensitive for other people, kind of dealing with that. But the thing is too, like you got to realize, you know, sometimes like people in TV shows they play a villain, and the people hate that character, you know. Like the, well, the, you the, some the, the audience, well, well, that, but also like they hate that character, but that's the point. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's what makes like, the story. That means that that character did did their job perfectly in that moment. You know, yeah. and I think uh, sometimes you got to play that character uh, for other people's stories, and uh, you got to be ready for the like as a streamer, you got to be ready for the flack of that. You know, because some people get too pumped up and they think it's real life, and they just go, "I hate." You know, oh, I hate that guy. I hate, you know, I hate Wombat because he did this, you know, or or whatever versus yeah. it being like, oh, like, you know, this character is the one I hate, you know? Yeah. But like at the end of the day, someone's just trying to interpret something. And in the end of the day, even as you say, we'll all take a beer. We'll, you know, if you want to go for a few drinks, we'll have a few drinks. Like, your character. Yeah. It's your character. I don't know who you are, I've always seen. Like, maybe you're different. Mm-hmm. I've spoke to you, I've always seen. But when yeah. it comes down to, like, other people, what I'm trying to say is, like, I don't really know half of these people. And I've been mm-hmm. proven wrong so many times because I believed this before as well, you know, maybe like when you started role playing, you see someone yeah. being a dick and you're like, well, this guy's a complete dick. But then a lot of times you'll get into a call or you'll even meet these people in real life and you'll be like, you wait, you what? You're not a complete dickhead. <laughs> you're actually a smart person. And then it's like, shit, that's the same for every single person you meet. There's just, there's just way too many people for you to be able to generalize and think that, you know, just because someone interprets a villain in role play. They're going to yeah. have people in real life. Because let's be fairly honest, there's no villain, there's going to be no conflict, and there's going to be no back and forth between good to bad. And yeah, I don't know. In the end of the day, yeah. you always need a villain if you want a hero. So in the end of the well, day, it's really just interpreting that character. The hard thing, uh, yeah, the hard thing with it, right, is we're, and I'm not trying to like overhype it, but we... You know, we have to like write the show as we're doing it, you know? And so sometimes you think maybe a good, like that could be a good decision or, or whatever it is, or like a heist, you know, plan. You're like, oh, this could, this will be great. And then you like, it plays out and you're like, that was really overpowered or like, or like something <laughs> like that, you know? I think uh, it's just kind of being self aware in, in the moments as much as you possibly can. And, you know, it, yeah. And when you, when you, when you log off, just being able to be like, okay, uh, for me, 
caring about that player to player like experience kind of over everything else to me. If you care about that, you're probably in the right. Yeah. It's one of the most important things, especially when it comes down to, down to RP. I always say it takes two to tango. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, as long as you project something good, people are going to project something good back to you. And they're just the same in anything in life, not just in RP. So yeah, it's really just think about both sides and just be considerate. But then on the other hand, at times, what a lot of people don't understand is we're still people. And we're not meant to be judging people either, but at times you might judge someone on what they've done. And mm -hmm. at times, even their character may have just done something wrong one time or done something which you seem that is wrong, but it may not be wrong. And yeah. I've been a fault of this before, you know, like shit. At times you may get wound up about a situation and maybe he's not in the wrong. Who knows? But yeah, I think it's more just the fact of like understanding. That, yeah. yeah. If you see some like sort of stuff, it's not anything to do with, I won't see it at the end of the day. There's a player behind the character that they're playing. What do you think about the GTA, like, I guess, GTRP, like, where it's heading right now? You know, like, I think it requires, like, so much time. And then, like, people can eat it up in terms of viewing it, right? But how do you, how do we spend that much time and then not get too attached? Like, how? What, to like, the how, game? Or to the... Just, well, just, yeah, just, like, like, how do you separate yourself from the character once it gets to it, like... We're spending, you know, sometimes I'll be on a 10 hour stream or something like that. Like, what, what are some of your tactics to realize, like, when the maybe you're. Of what you see. Are you here to play a game and you're here to basically, you know, just get all the money? Are you here to basically do what you would do in real life, which is basically get rich as fuck and do whatever the want? Is this what you're looking to do? Or are you here to act? So that's yeah. the thing which a lot of people don't understand. RP is acting. And yeah. acting is something which a lot of people do. And a lot of people don't understand what it's a talent. And yeah. At the end of the day, if you're really good at acting, or you like acting in a way, it is something that can sort of work out. And if you can sort of enjoy it while you're acting and not make it seem like a job, that is one of the really good things, which at least people mm. enjoy it. I feel like that's why, obviously, we put time into it and we don't get bored. But then on the other hand, if you don't, well, how can I explain this? So when it comes down to acting, acting doesn't really resemble creativity. Creativity yeah. is a little bit extra. Learning how to act is just one of the things. But if you don't have the creativity, because obviously if you, you know, if you do have it at least, it's a thing that will maintain you to be able to keep on going for however long you want. Because if you think about it, 5M is just a sandbox. I've RP'd for like a lot, a lot of years. Probably like eight or nine years. Um, Armor 3, Armor 2, um, g -bars. Must have been back when like you, you, know, you were a kid. When like, I was really young. Right, like, <laughs> because I'm not very old either. No, because obviously I was yeah, yeah. getting into like, games when I was very young because... I was constantly getting kicked out of school. And in Spain, how it would work is after the first suspension, it was three days. Second suspension, seven. Third wow. one would be two weeks. And the fourth one was a month. And after mm -hmm. the fourth one, every single one was a month. So it gets to a point where it's like, well, I won't even go into How many did you get to? How many did you get to? I got kicked out of four different schools. But each school oh, would give you man. suspensions of, That's yeah, so I was just a little shit at school. But I was always yeah. smart. Like I knew what I was doing. It was really just obviously, yeah, just problems where you have when you're a little bit younger. Yeah. But at least. Basically, I just had a lot of time when I was younger, so obviously I started playing at this. And it was really cool. Like, it was completely different, especially like the armor ones, like Taki. You, have you ever heard, ever heard of Taki? Mm -mm. So it was basically like Afghanistan. Well, basically, it was yeah. Pakistan it was. But basically, it was like um, it was like the UN. Like, UN had borders and you had like fucking terrorists, you had police, but it was really, really good RP. And it was completely different. But basically, what I'm trying to get at is, at the end of the day, you still see them people nowadays on different sandboxes. So the thing is, 5M is just a sandbox for you to be able to create what you want to do and act and interpret the acting that you want to create. So yeah, in the yeah. end of the day, as long as you've got creativity and you know how to act and you know how to interpret what you're trying to create and you're good at doing it and you can constantly do it, then that's what will lead you to be able to stay on 5M for 100 years or be able to stay on there for however long you want to be there. Yeah. But I feel I like think that's, that's probably a... one of the main sources of things that you need, just so obviously the... you constantly create. That's a really good like place to keep the mind. I think is like if you always come back to a place of like I'm acting, you know what I mean, or like I'm telling a story, or um, you know, even though like you and I both have characters that have the same name as us, right? And you still have to like separate it in a sense where you have. But that, uh, how do you feel about that? Because for me, it was a fault. 
Because I didn't want. I think it was a fault for me too. I'm gonna be real. I think it was a fault for me too. I agree. I agree. I, if I would go back, I would change it, you know, but it's too far now. Um, what was the reason? But if I, the reason for me was I always thought that at least someone was going to say Jack and I was going to respond to it when I was really ill. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, why yeah, not yeah. just call myself Jack? And then, yeah, I, uh, I, don't know, I just, ran, I just randomly, I was going to try a criminal character, you know? And so before I even made the backstory for Nick, I was like, I, I kind of want to try like a criminal character. I had just done a Civ character for a long time. Yeah. And I was like, made it on stream, you know, just like, oh, Nick this is a joke. And then I looked at chat and then someone's name was Ender, you know, in the chat. And I go, <laughs> Ender, you know, the way that and, guy is today. Well, whenever he comes back, he's always like, how's my cousin Nick Ender doing? You know, like, it's, it's cool. It's <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's but, uh, but yeah, now like I look at it, I, I would do that differently. Like, I, I would, I would have changed the name and everything, but you still have to put yourself in a place where uh it's happening to my character it's always happening to my character and not what you're to doing me it is to someone's character as well yeah yeah well i like, get comments you know, sometimes where people are like how do you stay like so calm in that in that mode like because on stream i'll be like you know chilling and then like get into it and like you know go um and and sometimes i, I fail at that for sure you know but i think that's the only when i when i do it right that's where my mindset's at is like you're saying like like I love movies and stuff and like shows and I love, I just love that whole idea of creating in that way of like, you know, writing, writing something that you can go boom, 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 but we're writing it on the fly and, the, and then acting in it. And it's just like a really big improv, like just so cool. Uh, and so I, that's kind of where I, I try to keep my mind as well is like, how can I make this a, like a scene that could just like, you could chop up and you could put it on a screen, you know? Um, and most of the time that doesn't hit that because it's just a video game or whatever. Sometimes we slip into these areas where it's just like for a moment, some people's like reality are suspended, you know? And my, my reality is even suspended a little bit where I'm like so immersed in the story. And that is where I, I'm like, I feel like I'm like actually creating something cool. It is. You know? Well, the thing is, while a lot of people don't understand this, as this resembles acting, it comes down to the fact of maybe like a film. People nowadays who make films, they spend millions of dollars on CGI. We can actually interpret something, which we can bring a plane in, we can bring in a fucking helicopter, we can bring in all this shit, which is in a game, yes. But with people like even Jason, which are editors, mm -hmm. you can make something like out of film, where you basically film barely nothing, but with CGI and with a load of other things, you'll create, you know, a really good film, and especially with the actor yeah. and the content which the stream was made. But with the help of the editors, you can turn this into film. And you can make a lot more content on this than what you would out of other things because let's be fairly honest, CGI and all these like big things that, you know, come down to like the, the film industry, they're expensive as fuck and there's things that we don't have access to. And this is the yeah. way I guess that we, I guess, interpret this and it's the way that we get to create our own film. So when it comes to like movies and stuff like that, what, do you have like a favorite type of movie? Like, is it heist movies you like? Is it like, I don't know, crime? Is, is it crime movies at all? Or is it kind of like you don't like movies? Like, where, where are you at with that? Well, it really depends. I'd say even like, I'd say for like stories in a way. Yeah. I don't like usually saying these sort of things, but this is something I could talk about because um, this is actually something that was published. This guy put it into a book. But it's somebody we met as we was young. Um, I don't want to say his name, but I can say his name because he made a book. His name was Morris. He was an Irish guy. But this was really strange because I remember where, like in another server they told us heist characters weren't really like real. It didn't really make sense. But anyway, this guy basically we met a long time ago. He's like a family friend. And yeah. he wrote a book about basically what he used to do. And this guy used to rob trains, used to rob banks. Like, you know, he's sort of that guy, you know, that you meet. Yeah, that's life. crazy. The guy was really old. That's why he wrote his book. I think he's even dead now. He died like a few years ago. But the guy's mm. like a really good guy. But like even reading his books, you can interpret his life. It's like, oh, this is really good. And I'd say it's something which you can sort of see a lot resembled in a lot of movies nowadays as well. And it's like, shit, this is stuff that happens. And on top of it, at times you can interpret really good movies out of it. And I feel like we've all seen really good movies, like even the Italian job and all the basic ones and like even older movies and even newer movies. And I don't know. I wouldn't say I've got an express detail in say like movie, which I like, but I feel like- yeah. If you know how to at least examine something, every movie is going to have some sort of niche which you can basically analyze and say if this is going to be better than some other thing. Because even if it's a genre that you don't like, 
at times the acting or the producing or something that's been involved there, even the editing, could be really, really good. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like there's always something which you can take out of some sort of film which is going to be good and some sort of yeah. Too. Every once in a while, I'll see a show, you know, and I'll like, there's like stuff that I'll grab from it and just like, okay, that that idea was really, really cool, you know, like there's an idea in uh, Yellowstone that I was looking at that I actually might like enter this in like as an idea. So just act like you didn't hear it in the, in the city. We'll see how good the acting is when you, when you do it, <laughs> when you're like, Whoa, that's a great idea. But I was thinking about doing, cause what they do in there is when they have somebody join, like kind of like the criminal side of what they're doing, they brand them. So they like brand them with like a, like the logo. Right. Yeah. And I was thinking about that. Obviously I don't think we want to brand people on, on like a, you know, live stream, especially okay, TikTok might not like that. But I think I think the uh, like a tattoo or like um, like some kind of marking where you're like, okay, you're in and that's your decision. And, you know, it, you know, if like you're out, we, we want that back. You know what I mean? That's like that's kind of the idea that they have is like did a clear story. Yeah, it, 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 and it brings like the, the like severity of deciding to join. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I think that's like such a cool, interesting like idea. I think it, it, it like once you get that tattoo, you're like, oh, I, I got this. You know what I mean? And it, it, for the character, it's like a cool idea. And uh, those are the kind of things that are like when I see it on a show, I'm like, ooh, that that could real that just like brings like the level up a little bit more, you know? And uh, you kind of like grab and and, and kind of like use that, you know? There was another one I did at one point. I don't know if you ever seen the show Money Heist before. No. It's actually a Span have, it's a Spanish sure. show as well. Oh, like um, I said, the papel, I've seen, I've seen. I don't oh, it's like, it's called something. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, I it remember I did, uh, it's weird. The try like the translation yeah. behind it. I don't know why, but it's called the house of cards. But yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's like, he's kind of like an orchestrator. Right. And so there was like a heist I did a while back using like the cameras where like you watch over the bank and then people, they're yeah. like doing the job, you know, it's just kind of like th those little things to grab from like movies or those kinds of like, stuff. Like I think it's kind of a fun idea. Even like Michael Scofield. That's sort of like how characters that we used to interpret before. But obviously, yeah. it's very hard to understand that at times if you interpret these characters, these characters, when they was made to act, they weren't made to think about the second side. They was made to get out every time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So exactly. at times when you are up here, it's like, yeah, you can try go for it, but at times you can understand that you can't be Michael Schofield every fucking time. Because yeah. if not, I, I yeah. think. I think the key is in the conversations, right? That's where the acting really like shines is in conversations with people and uh, like conversational like RP. And it's sometimes like I shy away from it because you can be standing there for a while talking, you know, but then you like sort of think like, oh, this is like the meat and potatoes of the story. This is like, you know, it, this is why we're doing the other things, you yeah. know, it's the substance and, behind everything, you know. And yeah, that's and that's what biggest parts of things. Yeah, that that exactly, and so I, I think, um, yeah, I I was just curious if you kind of think through like if you like see certain things on like a movie or you see certain whatever. I know I've I've like thought about like heist plans and stuff like that sometimes from like oh, I saw this on like a a movie and I think it'd be kind of cool to like recreate something of that idea within the mechanics. But well, I've even done um, it with my character at times, like as like a joke, you know what I mean? Like I remember, yeah. like I turned jackets to like Ali G for a day as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just like yeah. messing around, even like the manners are speaking, just messing around. So at times, yeah, there's things that you can do, and um, you can bring it from movies. And I think have you ever heard of sixty seconds? I think it's sixty uh, seconds. Like gone in sixty seconds, or I was not too. Yeah, I think it's gone in sixty seconds with uh, Nicholas Cage do, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do we like stealing cars? I'm yep, not too sure, yep. but that's apparently the whole thing that Chad's been doing. So even Hell yeah. himself is trying to interpret the whole like uh, the chop thing, but it all comes yeah, in yeah. sixty seconds. And he's been trying to do this for the last fucking like six months since he beat it. And um, it's quite interesting at times to see people try reproduce things from films. But I've always thought as well, even like a conversation we had the other day, even though it weren't recorded, but basically at times you want to see originality. And I feel yeah. like if you feel like a movie producer and you want to basically create your movie, at times you don't want to replicate the movie. Even though at yeah, times it exactly. can be really cool and at times it can be an easier form of content because you don't have to create your own. And I wouldn't say just create your own. I'd say at times you're sort of limited in a way as well. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like at times creating your own and being original is something which yeah. feels more self-rewarding. 
Yeah, I think if you take the pieces of it, you know, that's where it really, that's the best thing to do because not the, the whole thing's not going to fit within like the game because the mechanics won't let you do it, you know? Yeah. And so you have to like kind of take the pieces and kind of put them together and just kind of, yeah. We I, did I think one the other day with, kind of um, I think it was with Mel and one of the ballers. And basically they were trying to buy Blue Ovals and at the same time they told us they had the mystery machine van. I was like, what about if you use your thermite and you give me your van? What about if we could do like a, like a, like a scooby doo thing? We did a whole scooby doo yeah. thing. Kitty pulled off. was mm-hmm. like, yeah. We didn't even do a hostage. So basically we made out like if we was looking for ghosts there. We just got all the loot real quick. We basically waited for them to come. They pulled up as we was in there. So we only robbed like half of the jewelry store. But we all jumped yeah. to the scooby doo van. We was all basically trying to interpret a little bit of scooby doo, even though it wasn't that much of a big thing. Because it's hard. Yeah, yeah. That's just a job. But even as I said before, like the 60 second thing, that turned into a whole storyline when it comes to chess. So yeah, I feel like at times it really depends on how you want to do it, but you can pick it it's maybe do it for a job, which is something which isn't going to last too long. But then, on the other hand, you could turn it into like a whole storyline. Like I said before we chat, and I feel like maybe even other things that maybe I've not really noticed. But then on the other hand, I like the originality of it. So you basically create your own thing too. Yeah. But then on the other hand, it's good to fill in gaps as well, you know, at times when you want to basically do different things. Because it's good to have the right. Well, well, the difference is, right, is we've got to do it for, you know, five, say five hours, something, but that's like a short stream for, for me. You know, you got to do it for like five to ten hours, you know, and the, the movies too. You know what I'm saying? And so like sometimes when you have to like flush out the idea, it takes a lot of time and then sometimes you get into the idea you're like oh shoot this is going to take me like a week to build is it really that worth it (laughs) it took it very literally though as well if you look into films you could look at things like series like the wire like maybe i've bought some things from the wire at times like the wire is like an old show but like the wire is actually really good too but you've got shows which are film like they're not films but they're film in a way so basically yeah in the end of the day it's still basically the same sort of shit but they're really long at times they can get mm. really entertaining and that's what people really enjoy at times the continuous thing and it's not ending so yeah um i don't know i feel like yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting idea i think it's uh it's cool to find inspiration for things you know yeah um and not just yeah. that it connects as well because if a viewer comes in and they see you doing i don't know i said like the job the other day with the scooby-doo and they've seen scooby-doo before then it's something they can resonate it's even the same with gta I think we had a conversation about this a long time ago as well. It's something which people watch and it's something they've seen. Like even you in LA, you've seen places which are exactly the same as what you see on GTA. So it's yep. easy for people to resonate. So like even doing an Italian job, so many people have seen the Italian job that when they see that, they can be very intrigued and even more to a point of maybe say like all the other jobs. But then on the other yeah. hand, as someone who wants to produce something, at times it's really cool to have your own see on things and create your own things. I'm not saying constantly, I'm just saying you've got people which, you know, reproduce certain movies and they do it constantly. And I feel yeah. like the people which really have the value are the people that can half and half it. So they can mess around with the other shit to be fun, but then they can create their own stuff. Because that's where yeah. you see someone... I think it's, yeah, it's take it, it's take it and stretch it out, stuff. you know? Like, take, take it and make it your own and, like, kind of, like, play with that idea, you know? I, I think the idea is the really the thing, you know? Versus, yeah, yeah like a, a shot for shot. <laughs> Something you like just that use for it sure. as a theme, you know, at times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so on, the, on the streaming side of things, what's that been like for you? Like starting that journey and kind of going down that path? Like wh- what, what are some of your, like, I guess, yeah, what's your reaction to like the, starting the whole streaming journey and everything? Um, I'm really not too sure. I didn't really expect much of it, to be fairly honest. I just thought, shit, I'll do it at the end of the day because a lot of the people have already asked, like, how are the boys? They said, why didn't you do it? And I thought, shit. In the end of the day, if someone's going to take in, like at least some sort of enjoyment out of this, yeah, then why not do it? If some guy's going to be happy about watching what I'm doing, that's completely fantastic and I love it. And not just that, I didn't really know this or even feel this at the time, but you actually start, you know, seeing a lot of people in there and you get some sort of connection in a way. And there's some really good people out there, which I don't know. I don't know. They, how do I explain this? They wish the best for you and I feel like you wish the best for them as well. Yeah. It's a strange thing, but I feel like it's maybe something that maybe even you feel at times. Because there are people that are I wasting feel, their time with their, out their day to come and watch what you're doing, and it's something which I like to do, and if you like to do it as well, I feel like in some sort of way there's some sort of resemblance there. So yeah, it's something which I've really enjoyed, but it's I think, a journey. I think it gives a little... It, it gives a little like uh, 
belief in humanity sometimes again, you know, and then sometimes not. Sometimes you get some like some people coming in that are like kind of crazy, you know, but <laughs> for me, like that was the one thing when I started streaming, I was just trying to find my sandbox to create. And I wanted to connect with people, but that wasn't like the main focus when I first started. And it's shifted now. Like that's the main focus. I want to connect with people and why I do RP is so that I can like, I can connect with people through telling stories and, and doing that kind of a thing. Uh, but I didn't expect that when I started as well. I was like, I, I thought it was just gonna be, you know, people watch and they enjoy and then they, you know, leave or whatever, you know, come in and out. Um, and then you sort of realize like, oh dude, some of these people have spent a lot of time with me through the chatterbox, you know? And it's just kind of like a, it's, it's like a really cool, it's, it's a really weird. Careful. I mean, they're sort cool of way. Thing. It's strange, but yeah, you sort of careful. Even like when we come into a war where we feel like some people may not be the best because, you know, they might be good people, but they might, they might not bring good content, as people say. Yeah. And maybe yeah. at times we won't go towards it. That's because we care about the viewers' time. Like before, yep. I wouldn't really mind. Like I, I could waste some time messing around and, you know, maybe go fuck up some people as a joke. But yeah, it's, I don't know. It's something which in the end of the day is like someone's here to spend their time to watch you. At least bring something good to the table in some sort of way. Yeah. Don't change what I you think, do. But yeah, yeah, I think the hard—that's the hard time. thing, right? The hard balance is valuing the people's time by trying to create something that that is worth their time to watch, um, but also not creating things just for the reaction of people. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like, 100%. like if if your whole it's sole really purpose, important. yeah, if your whole sole purpose, especially within GTA roleplay is to create it so that people like it, uh, you kind of become this like, ah, what, what do you guys want? Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of like the dancing monkey here, you know? Like, I, like it, you start to do that and it becomes that you're not creating like for the sole purpose of like creating something like meaningful, something interesting and that kind of stuff. It, it starts to become like, what do you guys, like I'm looking over my other monitor because that's like where my chat is. But, like, what do you guys want? Uh, okay, I'll do that. You know, I'll do that. I'll do that. Versus it being like, I'm going to create something that hopefully means something to me. And then that will mean something to people, Yeah, you know? Uh, and I think that's art in a way, you know, I don't want to like overhype, you know, the whole GTA idea, it's but awesome. there is some, is. there is some piece of that to me that, that don't like, the only reason I could keep doing RP for this long is because it is creating something that can mean something. It's as we said before, you know? film, even though film yeah. is only something which can even be considered imaginary in a way. It could be considered to be impactful on people which can impact other people, which is yeah. something important because at the end of the day, it can either spread positivity or it could spread enlightenment in certain situations which people haven't seen before. So, I don't know, I think it's important. But as you said before, it's an art because at the end of the day, it's like a film. A film is an art. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's, I guess... Well, I think it, it seems, that seems into like all time things of streaming, right? I remember when I was doing Variety, um... It wouldn't be, what do you guys want to see today? You know, it would be, I would spend Sunday and I'd plan out my whole week, right? I'd be like, okay, this is what I'm doing today. And this is why, like, like I would try to answer that question. This is why I think you should watch, yeah. you know? Um, and every day I would, I would, I would bring that same thing and I would plan out my entire week, the, the weekend before, you know? And I think that's, uh. I think that's kind of where I've always tried to stay with streaming is that it's a place to create and it, it is a form of art, even just the streaming portion of it, you know? And, um, yeah. And so I, I'm glad you get to experience some of that dude. And I, I, I hope you're enjoying it. You know, yeah. that's it. it's a journey and it takes so fucking long and there's so much to fucking learn, but it's cool. And, uh, but it's definitely something that I'm intrigued into. And as I said, it's just like anything else. It just takes time. If anyone expects it to be from day to night, then it's just, um, it's pure insanity, but yeah, there's some really good people out there. That's all I can say. And yeah, uh, if they enjoy watching it, then that's fantastic. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, well, um, you're you're on TikTok now as well, right? Well, I started the TikTok thing, but I basically yeah. got one of my boys who was editing. But I was waiting him to basically just change his job because he had like a week left till he changed his job. But he started yeah. trying his editing now, and basically I was like, fine, I can put it on the TikTok, and he's been doing quite well. Yeah, he did quite well. He liked it. Good. So it's something oh, yeah. which I'm going to start definitely getting into. And yeah, I think I did YouTube Shorts as well. But the YouTube Shorts was, um, I don't know. It was just like something extra. Because in the end of the day, I feel like you maybe have, you know, at one point Anything, got put yeah. into the same crossroads. It was like, shit, 
why don't I do these sort of things? Yeah. I'm already doing it. So what the fuck do I just already put in some work towards it? Because as I said, if you're going to try to do something from day to day, you need to put work into it. So yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, I think, I think, yeah, it's just about finding your own voice on each platform. Right. And kind of treating it as that creative like outlet, you know, like even the, the TikToks and stuff, you're like, okay, how do I want to, how do, how do I want to speak to people? You know, like, yeah. How do I want to pr present what I do li on live stream? Like, how do I want to, for like, how can I package that to people in a, in a short clip? You know, yeah. and that's kind of a cool like challenge to overcome because you're like, okay, maybe I should do this. No, let's th tweak that. You know, it's like a lot of the conversations and justice and I have like, oh, maybe we should, uh, you know, like what, what are we going to well, do? No, you know, it's kind of look at a portion and you think, should I put this portion of shooting or should I just put the portion of where the cop may, you know, not see me and he looks a little bit stupid and you get away, you put some funny music, some stupid shit. Like in the end of the day, yeah, there's, yeah. there's so many little small bits to it, which in the end of the day, just take a lot of work to put into, I don't know. Something which you want to create, and that makes it, it yeah, it is a lot of work. It makes it, it unique. is, yeah. I want to say the word um, a big part of it. I'm more, more saying the fact that it makes it unique whenever you're trying to basically interpret or present 100 something that, in the end of the day, could be read, could be presented in different ways, but it's the way that you present mm -hmm. it which makes it unique. So yeah, it's cool. I'm, I'm glad you're you're going to go down that path, dude. And if there's ever like I don't know, not that I would be able to help much with whatever, but if there's ever anything I, you need from me, bro, you know I'm. You know, yeah, I, I my DMs are always open for that. So you know, it's the same um, both ways. Yeah, man. Uh, so anyone who's watching, guys, make sure you guys go uh, follow Jack Spaniard on <laughs> Twitch. You can catch his live stream there. Um, and you know, when we're at, when we're when we're button heads on something, you can be like, you know, Jack's right because he probably is. You know, anyways, <laughs> he probably is right <laughs> on, on the side of it. I probably should have shot, or or you could be like, you know, you can see both sides of it. You know what I'm saying? But well, also, you um, who knows? You know, I'm never. Yeah, exactly. Bro, that's what I'm saying. Know, uh but no i i think it's it's something that uh you guys should definitely give him a follow uh on twitch as well as tiktok um and so i appreciate you guys watching uh today's podcast if you guys have any like reactions to this put it in the comments down below or if you uh you know got any questions that kind of stuff i can answer it next podcast so thank you guys so much for listening and uh we will see you uh yeah see you in the next one thanks jack great appreciate night you. and everyone say yeah adios Hey guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. There's another one right here or like maybe right here or something like that. Uh, also, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button. If this is your first time ever seeing me, I'm also live on Twitch Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I might be live right now. You never know. All right. See you in the next video. Bye.